Hi everyone, my name is Kinya Ota. I have spent more than 10 years studying the world of issue evolution and development. Recently, my friend asked me to make detailed videos about evolutionary development of biology of goldfish. So I have decided to produce this video series based on my papers and my book. We will explore goldfish evil people. In the previous video, we saw the first half of the gastrula period and the early gastrulation stages. So in this video, I will continue examining the next stages of embryonic development of goldfish. But if you haven't seen the previous video yet, I strongly recommend that you watch that first. Please use the link provided below. Let's go it. During gastrulation, the blastoderm begins to cover the yolk. As the stage progresses, the blastoderm area becomes larger and larger than the yolk. Half of the yolk is already covered and the discontinued area is still expanding. Since the change in which the blastoderm area spread is continuous in this way, I explained that the extent to which the blastoderm covers the yolk is expressed as a percentage and given the name of the stage as an index. In other words, the ratio of the height of the discontinued egg and the height of the yolk seen from the side is used as a staging index to distinguish the stage of the development. And it's named like 30% epiboli. In more detail, the epiboli seems to have a meaning of covering. So 30% epiboli means a stage when 30% of blastoderm is overlaid. However, this epiboli had some problem as a staging index. This is due to the characteristics of goldfish embryos. So here I will give a supplementary explanation about the staging index and epiboli, although it is on the way. The staging index is a very important tool for communication. By skillfully using the staging index, you can easily express the developmental stage of the embryo you observed. On the other hand, it becomes necessary to be careful about which staging index to use. This is because if you do not use the staging index that is easy for anyone to understand and the mistake do not occur, subsequent communication will not be established. The staging index generally uses the number and the shape of morphologies that can be easily identified without the use of special reagent or equipment. Uh, considering that, the staging index based on the discontinued and the shape of the egg seems to be good. Certainly, the size of blastoderm and the yolk can be confirmed immediately with a simple stereo microscope. Everybody has been used as a staging index in the developmental stage table of zebrafish. So it is thought that by applying it directly to goldfish, it will be possible to describe embryonic development during gastrulation while comparing it with zebrafish. However, it should be noted here that it is impossible to know whether the staging index used in one organism's developmental stage table applied to another organism. Each organism may have different developmental characteristics. Without careful observation, we cannot determine whether we can directly compare the developmental process between two species. Since goldfish and zebrafish are closely related fish species, most staging indexes can be used in common. However, some staging indexes differ in how they are generated, making it difficult to compare them. This makes sense since goldfish and zebrafish are different species. As you can see in this time-lapse video of goldfish eggs, the yolks of fertilized eggs move like this in the process of development. On the other hand, the zebrafish yolk does not change its shape much during embryogenesis. Therefore, the method of comparison of height of the yolk and the discontinuation is suitable for studying zebrafish embryo, but it is not suitable for goldfish. In other words, in the case of goldfish, the height of the yolk changes, so there may be a slight deviation in some cases. Therefore, when creating a goldfish developmental stage table, we thought that if we use only epiboli as the staging index, we would not 
to be able to accurately describe the developmental stage. So I searched for a better way to do it myself. Then we described to determine the developmental stage by comparing the diameter of the blast pore. Where the yolk protrudes from the blastodermal region and the maximum diameter of the embryo seems from the vegetal pore side. By combining both blast pore closure and epibody, which represent the spread of the blast pore, and using it as a staging index, it becomes possible to more accurately describe the stage of goldfish embryonic development. At this point, the blast pore is almost completely closed. The process of covering the yolk with the blastoderm is called gastrulation, and gastrulation ends here. This stage of embryonic development is called the bad stage. When the embryo reaches this stage, you can no longer use blast pore closure and epibody as staging indexes. So from here, we look at the number of body segment, which is the next index. But before that, let's check the easy to understand structure at this stage. One is the neural plate, which is the base of the neural tube. Basically, the nerves of the vertebrate pass through the middle of the body as a thick nerve tube, which grows larger in the head and forms the brain. For originally, such nerve tubes are shaped like plates. Then, where you can actually see the pores is around this bad stage. The head also had a flat shape when viewed from the front. This plate-like structure later became a tube-like structure. Fish and humans as vertebrate have spinal nerves, so on which side of the body are the spinal nerves located? And just think about which side is the dorsal side. As the name suggests, it is located on the dorsal side. The neural tube also runs down the dorsal side. In that case, the one with this neural tube will be on the dorsal side. Now you can see why I said in the previous video that this is the dorsal side. Also, the part of that becomes the head seam in the sealed stage that I showed in the previous video. That part is at the top, on the animal pole side. This is where the neural tube of the head will be formed. There is also the notochord, which is as important as the neural tube, but it is difficult to explain at this stage, so we will move on to the next stage. Please focus on this side for a moment. A kind of structure has taken shape. This structure is called a somite. Because of the peculiarity of this segmental structure, this period has been given the name segmentation period. Embryos during the segmentation period allow us to identify developmental progress by counting the number of somites. In other words, the number of body segments is a good staging index. This somite can conveniently be used to describe different stages of development. During this period, the shape will change rapidly. Until now, the egg yolk, which has just round, will begin to change shape. And you can see bulges here and there in the neural tube. This is because the nerves in the head make up a more complex structure than the nerves in the rest of the body. At later stages, the forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain become more visible. We can see the structure called the optic vesicles, which is a primordium of the eyes, and otic vesicles, which is a primordium of the ear. These features become more visible when the number of somites exceeds 10. And if you look here, it looks like a transparent round thing in the tip of this tail. This is a structure called the Kupfer's vesicle. There is a space surrounded by cells and the cilia are lined up. And this has a function that creates the difference between the left and the right. And some parts of the yolk are becoming different than other parts of the yolk. You can see that the yolk around here is growing. It is a structure called yolk extension. As body lengthens, the yolk also lengthens. It certainly feels like the body is trying to grow as the body segments increase more and more. When the number of somites reach about 20, the embryo begins to twist its body from side to side. 
This is because some cells derived from these somites have changed into muscles with the ability to move. Somites differentiate not only into muscles but also into tendons, bones, skin and other tissues that support the body. Therefore, it loses the original shape. Even if you look at the adult body, it is difficult to get an image of the tissues and organs that retain their shape only during the embryo. So please watch the video you are watching now and develop your understanding. At this point, you can clearly see a transparent rod-like structure in the middle of the body. This is a notochord which has already formed at an earlier stage, but as I mentioned before, it's hard to see in the early stage embryos. The actors who shape the body of the goldfish have gathered. This time, following at last time, various terms came out, so let's summarize them. There are some overlap with the last time, but uh, I think it's better to listen it many times. So I'll explain more here. Gastral period. The, this hollowed part of the blastoderm is called gastra, and uh, the process is called gastrulation. Therefore, this period is known as the gastra period. It is blastopore. Using the degree of contraction of this hole as an index, we can describe the stages of embryonic development. Segmentation period. This is a time when the structure called the somite is formed. During this period, the structures that will later become the ears and the eye called the optic vesicle and optic vesicles appear. The rest is the notochord. It plays an important role in the differentiation process of somite derivatives. From now on, such terms will come out more and more, but let's remember as much as possible. Now let's preview the next episode. The number of somite in the embryo you saw this time has exceeded 20. When this appears, change occur all over the body. When developmental progress is further, it enters a stage called the pharyngeal embryonic stage. Next time, I will take about embryonic development at the pharyngeal stage. It is time to say goodbye. I hope you learned something new about goldfish development and evolution from this episode. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch the next episode. See you soon.